And we are live. JT here, and welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I want to take a moment to thank you, whether you are watching on YouTube or on Facebook, or whether you are listening to the audio on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And here's my friendly reminder to you. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. So my challenge to you is to go all in on this conversation, to remove any distractions and get laser focus on the here and the now. And I guarantee you, you will gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with uh, my special guest today. Uh, we, we've had some great conversations uh, over social media. Again, you know, it's funny. We sometimes get demonized for social media, but you can actually meet some very interesting and like-minded people. Uh, we had the opportunity to actually meet in person this fall uh, at a Corpus Christi game. Uh, my guest in the huddle today is a teacher, a coach, an ed educator, but more importantly, an amazing human being. Uh, my guest in the huddle today is Coach Dino Porchetta. How are you today, Coach? I'm great, JT. Thanks so much. Thanks for, uh, it's like, this is, uh, uh, it's an honor. Uh, yeah, I listened for a long time and uh, got me through some great workouts. And, uh, you know, just that Canadian content is hard to find as, uh, you know, uh, for us as coaches. So for you to keep pumping these out, thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. It's all good, brother. Um, again, I know you're a veteran of uh, listening to the podcast. And, and you know, one of the first things I like to do in the huddle is to remind people that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun, right? Depending on when people are listening to this exam time here as, as we record this here in Ontario. Um, I'm curious, what's an interesting fact about you that maybe a lot of people don't know that you'd be open to sharing with our community here today? I forgot you asked this question and I've listened to <laughs> 50 of these. Uh, I will say, I'll say two things. One, I'm a pretty good drawer. Uh, I got some, got some uh, love to, used to love to do that in my, in my downtime. Okay. And number two is uh, I think I'm an extroverted introvert. Mm -hmm. uh, love being home with wifey. Love a weekend where we're doing nothing and alone. And uh, yeah, in that regard, COVID wasn't terrible uh, with, we were, you know, shutting it down and chilling out and uh, we're a good little team. So I'm, uh, as much as I talk a lot, I'm actually a little bit of an introvert. Circle's tight. <laughs> <laughs> I love that brother. And I appreciate you being open to sharing and it's interesting. So it sounds like you have, you like to flex your creative muscles right? Through drawing. And similar to you, I, I feel the same way. I'm, I'm an extroverted introvert. So, so I'm curious, being able to really, you know, turn it on when you, when you need to, again, when you're, when you're teaching, when you're coaching, when you're, when you're guiding and mentoring, you know, young people, but then also having the ability to go within, um, you know, is that something you've always sort of known about yourself? Or is that something that you've sort of just learned more about yourself through your, your journey? I think it, I think it just comes down to, um, if I was in a course and I wasn't interested, the reading and the studying was difficult, almost impossible. Um, I'm a guy that needs to read things many times over. I'm, I'm that kind of person. I need to, I need to PVR and play stuff back all the time. I, I your podcast, I will zip back on something six different times to get it, to get it, to get it, to, to catch that coach and what he said. So, but when you're really interested in it and you're all in, uh, I can, I can, you know, a clinic or a coach or a speaker, um, you're dialed into every word, the inflection. So I guess it's just that matter of when you're really into something, 
um, you know, you're all in and see the greater good and, and really believe in it, following passions and stuff is, uh, you know, where, you know, it's, it's not work. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's self-betterment. It's something you can, I'm always thinking of tidbits to, to share with my team. I'm, you know, scribbling things down, putting them in a notes on a phone for, for next year, for chapel, for a, a team meeting, for, you know, we take a knee before and end of practice. And there's a lot of growth there. There's a lot of sharing there. There's a lot of give and take there. Um, so you're always, you're always looking to get better. And I think that, uh, you know, for, for me with, with building those relationships, when, uh, I was like that as a player, I love to, you know, I wanted to be in with my rela- relationships with team, mm-hmm. you know, whether you play a ton or play a little, I wanted to know about those guys. I wanted to, you know, kind of build that bridge to people. So when you care about people, uh, care about the subject, it's not all, it's not hard work. It's not, uh, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Can't, can't learn enough, right. Just to pass that on to the, to the kids. Yeah. Mm. I love that you share that. And what I really heard from you was that idea of, you know, it's when you read a book for this, I had a great mentor sort of share this idea. Like when you read a book for a second time and you see something different, you just Mm. discovering something or rediscovering something about yourself. So I love how you're sharing this, the importance of going back and re-listening, rereading, because you'll discover something new. Right. Um, And I'm curious. So, you know, You've obviously had a, a wealth of experience. You know, first you were a high quality athlete, and then obviously you've transitioned into becoming a high quality coach. Sport has obviously pay, played an important role for you in your life. So I'm curious beyond the importance of, you know, going back and re listening, re watching, or the importance of investing into people and loving on them and creating relationships. Uh, have you discovered? any life lessons that you've taken from sport? And again, I know there's many, but you still find yourself applying to other areas of your life today. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, it's just, again, it's, it's going to an experience and taking something out of it that you didn't really think you would. Um, went to visit a player at uh, an old student and a, a neighbor and a friend uh, playing basketball at Vanderbilt. And uh, in and around when we were there, um, their athletic director passed away, a legend at Vanderbilt named Dr. David Williams, the second vice chancellor, athletic director, a legend in sport and at that school and reading about the testimonials about him in that week where the, the city was grieving in Nashville when we were there. The reason my neighbor went and played basketball there was that man, his, his relationship with his mom, that, that unbelievable, I'm giving you my son. Um, hearing him say a couple of things really resonated. And I thought about them many times. And, and the big thing was when there was a, an issue on campus with student athletes and decisions in the, in the SEC or whatever, his big thing was a question for the room was everybody, what's best for student athletes? So I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but what is best for student athletes? So when we're, when we're stuck on decision-making, I think, uh, I think we got to think what's best for kids. So and another thing he said that ties to that is it's not about being right. It's about getting it right. How do we get this right? It's not doing it my way. It is what's best, what's what's in the best interest of the customers or the kids. And that's who the program's about. It's not about anointing me and the adults up. It's, it's serving kids doing, you know, the, the social media and all that stuff is it's a great way to boost our kids up, you know, and how do I get my league to do that? How do we shine the light on other teams in our conference? It's not just about my kids, right? It's helping with the team. Oh, helping with any of that stuff. It's uh, it's not just about your own. It's, it's, it's helping the game. It's helping young people, just like people boosted me up, trying to boost them up. And there's a, you know, there's, there's a saying, you know, it's, you know, let your giant rise. Well, how do we get in them and reveal that and get them to, to rise? How do we get these young men to be better through sport and uh, be better young men and be great, you know, fathers and sons and, you know, whatever they're going to be down the road and leaders. And uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, that, that David Williams stuff is, is just so crucial. He was a hugger. He was a, mo- you know, he was, he was at all the stuff. He was uh untucked shirt and uh you know just came as he was and was just an unbelievable man and i think that that leadership is unbelievable you know when kids left they're they're hugging him like he's their uncle you know it's family it's uh it's a beautiful thing so just applying that to to what we do is uh is is very important you know your legacy and how you prop people up and i don't make them i don't make them anything i'm just trying to reveal the amazing things in them and you're just trying to uncover those so that they can 
get after what they want to get after and pursue whatever they want to pursue. And uh, whether they play football at the next level or not, um, how do you make them, you know, how do you just help them get to where they want to be and support them long after they wear the uniform? You know, it's, it's really getting notes and getting letters is a, it's a beautiful thing. And they come back and need something. Yes. How do we help? How do we make this a yes? How do we make that right? And uh, I think that's important. It's, mm. it's crucial. It's interesting as, as you were sharing, I thought of, you know, what you often referenced is this idea of leaders lead, right? Like again, leader, <laughs> leadership isn't a title. It, it's by your actions, right? Can you show people that you truly love them unconditionally, that you want to see what's best for them? Um, and I'm curious, you know, you were sharing um, about your story and, you know, I love that sort of prompting question, like what's best for kids, right? I'm curious, from your perspective, do you think that is something just, you know, it, it takes a certain amount of reps and sets. It takes a certain stage of life. It takes sort of a lot of mistakes before you sort of realize, like, at the end of the day, if you strip the sport away, you know, is it really what's best for kids? Is this what's best for families? Like, do you think that it takes a certain amount of time to get to that point to ask that sort of self-reflection question? Or do you think some people just get it and some don't? I'd be curious your perspective. I think it depends on why you get into this leadership position. You know, there's like, we're, we're volunteers, right? We're all doing this and we're, we're all, you know, we're, we're sometimes the adults are the biggest kids at the park, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but it really is about, I want to win every game we play, but I also want to win our way. And that means we're respecting our opponent. We're respecting ourselves. We're respecting the officials. I, I'm an official. I, I took up the game to help me coach and, and whatever and, and learn. Um, but we're going to respect ourselves and, and, and you know, our program and everything else. I, I'd rather lose than, than, you know, win the wrong way. I really would. I really would. That's very important. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we talk about that stuff. And it's, it's important to, to represent ourselves well, your body language and, you know, I love when guys and I'll shine a little red dot on a kid that cheers for another guy scoring, you know, and, and, you know, guys giving each other five as they're, you're taking my spot as a running back and I'm giving you five every time we pass each other. That stuff is important to that humble, that humility and that family kind of uh, is so important to, to have. And that's that selflessness um, you won't see me on our social media very often. It's not about me. It's about shining the light on them. Um, and, and that's what it's about. I've won awards. I don't post them. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's really for the kids and it's about the kids. Um, and my social media, my personal social media has nothing on it. I never post, I never, whatever. And, uh, it's just, it, it's really just about the kids and, and that's a vehicle for them. It's a great way for, for them to be recruited. It's a great way for them to express themselves. We also want to contain it and control it and not, you know, not get into silly stuff on that. Um, but it's important and that's a life lesson too, you know, but I also love that practice is a time where there's no technology and there's no phones. Um, we'll utilize it on a weekend where we want to watch film, but it's not going to be a distraction for us. You know, the, even down to the music we play in the hallways, it's very important that it represents us well and that we're coming off the bus and that it represents us and that the bus is clean and we're saying thank you on the way off the bus. That stuff means a lot to me. It means yeah. a lot to us that I want them to, I want people to know that what you're getting when, when you see our kids and you're getting our kids at the next level, I think they're knowing they're getting some good young men. You know, it's mm -hmm. important. That's very important to me. And uh, it doesn't stop. That doesn't stop that expectation. Uh, it doesn't stop. Mm. I love that. And, you know, it's interesting. It's a great reminder on sort of leaving others with the impression of increase, right? Leaving other people better than before you got there. Leaving spaces, leaving buses, right? Leaving cafeterias better. And it's interesting that it's such a simple idea, but when practiced consistently and mm. practiced well, it's interesting how that attention to detail, just like you said, just sets you up to win at the game of life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this group that we've had the last few years is very special and we get dealt an amazing hand. These parents are unbelievable. They're they're They got a foot into everything in the best way. They're so supportive. They're so supportive of me and my coaches and our program um, that we're getting dealt an unbelievable hand already. It's really just enhancement, right? Every kid enhancing on the field, enhancing off the field, helping in any way we can, because 
Oh, it's good. We remember being teenagers. You listen to your parents a little less. You're you're tuning other others in a little more. Um, and I and and we get that. And uh, and I'll talk to a mom or a dad, and they're like, "Can you please tell him that? I've been telling him that for three months. Can you please tell him about his sleep or his whatever as well?" Yeah. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's important. Um, I, I just think that you know I, I've been tapped on the shoulder for great things more than ever in the last few years, mm-hmm. uh, helping a teacher in a classroom, uh, you know, being supportive. My field hockey coach, when she says that she can't roll her goalie bag down the down the walkway before a kid comes by and I got you Mm. miss not in a way that's disrespectful in a way that is respectful Um, Mm. not that she can't do it but that they want to free her hands up to carry her other stuff Um, (coughs) that stuff's important you know and and we have a high level skier one of the best players in the province and he's on the ski team but he's lagging back with some kids that are not very strong and Mm. uh, a ski coach that is like oh well it's, it's it's like I have another coach here uh, so hearing that stuff where their emotional intelligence is high, yeah. um, that they, they want to be part of the solution in the school and, and assist adults and help adults. Um, that's, that stuff is beautiful. That stuff is, and we give decals for that. We get decals for that. When we, you're going to get them for touchdowns and yards, but part of our leadership and our program is you're also going to get them for being a good kid in the bricks and a good kid in the building. Um, your stuff like that. Uh, hey, the highest mark in the class was our offensive tackle. You're getting a decal on your helmet for that too. It's really about uh, uh, shining a light on on, on great things and mm-hmm. uh, on the field, off the field. It, it, it's all uh, it all matters. It all matters. And, and you, you're teaching the young guys that that stuff matters too, right? So that's important for them to kind of see because those when those studs leave, you have these young brothers that need to be that new crop. And and who teaches better than the than the players? It can't always come from from the old guys, right? Can't come from me all the time or my coaches all the time. Yeah. It's interesting because as you were sharing and you talked about like this, is like, you know, they often say in personal growth self-development takes a village, right? And and you really mm-hmm. get that sense around, you know, the Corpus Christi family because, you know, when I was blessed to come mm-hmm. watch a game, you know, had an opportunity to, to connect with some of our families that were part of the Team Ontario process. And, you know, I did notice little, little things though, coach, like you have that sort of um, spectator area and all the parents respected it. Like they stay in, in sort of the viewing area and, yes. you know, when you're talking to them, they, they come up, they say, hi, mm-hmm. hey, hey, how are you coach? And just yeah. talking about it. And so, so you really start to see that attitude filters down from the top, whether it's a great coach that reinforces those simple things, whether it's mom and dad at home, but then mm-hmm. at the end of the game, you see it with the young men where they're all coming up, they're all shaking hands. Thanks for coming out, coach. So again, I just share that with you just to say, it's interesting that you see those are the fruits of your labor there is when they do the little things well. You know, we've had coaches that have gone around to the schools and I, I, I make a point of, hey, you know, we got we had a coach over there that used to coach you guys a few years ago in junior on an LTO. Make sure you give him a hug, give him some love for that time he spent, <laughs> right? Like that stuff yeah. is, they, they, they've helped you and, propped you up and and what you said is something we talk about in chapel is you know if we have 50 guys on a team i really believe that you don't go out and just play for yourself you know yourself obviously and your brothers but you have a team behind you your family your coaches that teacher that that physio person that neighbor that aunt or grandpa that's there so we have a thing called 500 strong like you think you're coming to play 50 of us you're playing 500 of us today because i represent the 10 people that I'm standing on their backs for where I am, the the, the people that got me where, to, where I am now. So they're not coming to play 50 of us. They're coming to play 500. We're 500 strong today. And that's something we talk about in chapel. And, and there's that other element of, you know, the, the Belgian draft horse, one of the biggest, strongest horses in the world. On its own, it pulls eight, up to 8,000 pounds. When you put two of them together, they don't pull 16. They pull 24,000 pounds. So one plus one can equal three in a great marriage and a great relationship. So imagine when 12 of us are playing together. Imagine us when 40 of us are on the same page. We're unstoppable. We're mm-hmm. unstoppable. You will not defeat us. You will not. And, th- and that's that element of just, just look around this room, like look around this room and draw from that. And it's uh it's humbling. And, and, and I learn from them every day. I learn from them every day. The best part of my day is the two hours on the field where we can joke around and we can have fun and we can work and, and take a knee at the end and, and, you know, tell them we love them. And that's, I am theirs and they are mine. Right. And I, I'm there to serve them. They're there to serve me. And that's, it's reciprocal, but 
when it's only going one way, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And, and sometimes it happens, but it's just, uh, yeah, we got a great thing going and it's a beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, I'm really appreciative of them in this community. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. It is great. I'm very lucky. So I'm curious, again, you know, this year was a ton of successes, not only in the type of young men and parents you're blessed to be around, but, you know, there's a lot of success uh, on, on the football field as well. I'm curious, as you look back, you know, over the journey this season, you know, was there, was there a moment that really stands out where you're like, oh, I like, there's a lesson here that you started to better understand, right? Like, because obviously mm -hmm. you're, you're someone who is a constant, you're a student of life. Yeah. I'd say, um, we have our, we have our pasta nights before the game, um, that are very, very important to us. They're leadership opportunities. And one thing, uh, a dad loaned me a book last winter said he was reading about this, this program thought of us and, uh, thought I would, you know, thought I would enjoy the book. And, uh, we we instituted some of the leadership stuff in there uh, at our pasta nights and basically it is <clears throat> me and you let's say we play the same position we stand up after pasta we you know you break bread together it's a beautiful thing where we have parents donating some of those dinners it's very generous it's it's amazing my wife and i buy a few it's it's awesome uh after practice day before a game wait for us to come together we got an old dad that his son is long gone coach Ange, who still gives us our little pep talks and things like that it's a, it's a beautiful night and we give out our decals. We talk about some of those good things, but our, our leadership stuff that we do when they start, it's an accountability exercise where me and you, let's say we, let's say you're a receiver and I'm a DB, we guard each other. You're going to talk about your goals for tomorrow and your goals for next week. And I'm going to do the same. And then the next week I, I keep you accountable. You keep me accountable. So, but the beauty of it is it's not really for just starters. It's really that bottom end of the roster that doesn't play so much it's a way for them to be accountable where they understand, okay, well, my goal is not to score two touchdowns in this game. My goal is not to get four tackles. My goal might be to catch every ball that's thrown to me in practice. Your goal might be to be a Simon sound and line up over Dino this week. And I'm not going to let Dino catch a pass. And I'm going to, we're going to publicly put this out there and hold each other accountable. So they understand week to week, their work matters, what they do matters, that accountability, whether they got there or not. And then you have like, you know, a, a veteran or an older guy say, yeah, you know what, Dino had a good week, but he can be better. He knows he can also do this or this. And you got, you get a little bit of that going around and, and it's, it's given well and it's received well. When you have them taking that seriously um, and being accountable to, to, to each other. Um, and then also the fun of, I'm going to put Dino on his back this week in practice. I'm going to, I'm going to catch three touchdowns on him. Oh, heck no. That, that, that stuff, that healthy competition. Mm -hmm. uh, when we run, when we run one-on-ones, I'm going to get to the quarterback three times around Thompson. That mm -hmm. stuff is great. That stuff, that healthy competition is awesome. So seeing them buy into things, not that uh, these little strips of paper, this is kind of corny. I lost it. I don't have it. They buy in, you put it out there and they, and they, they just, they bought in and the, and the younger guys that aren't necessarily playing, it validates what they have to do and the accountability to each other. So it was just a great way. That exercise is really for those guys so that don't play, that they can't tap out, that they, what they do matters. They're still setting goals. And if a kid at practices uh, doesn't have ball security or is false stepping or jumping offside, hey, you might want to put that on your goals this week. It's great ways to just enhance and get everyone a little better and uh seeing them kind of buy into a silly little exercise they don't lose the sheets they write it down wait 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 i'm almost done um it's pretty cool you know they they're uh again it's 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 buying in they know it's important to me so it's important to them so when you, you see stuff like that and then you know or even in the in the you know in games like hey i got my goal i got my I got my pick or whatever and they're you know high-fiving you on the way off it's uh they're just buying in, you know, and that's, that's, that's the beauty of, uh, of this group, humble, hardworking, humble, hardworking. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's interesting because as you share, and I love that you shared the simple accountability exercise. And again, we could probably dissect that and talk about, you know, how that's something many high performers, right? In business and life, they have accountability partners. But one of the things that I've noticed that you do a great job of is, 
we're conditioned and trained to think about what we don't want in life often, right? And it's interesting what you do a great job of is you are essentially training, conditioning their minds to start focusing on what they do want, you know, the goals they want to hit, right? The behaviors that we want to embody and demonstrate with each other, with other caring adults in our life, with, with our families. And it just helped me to sort of discover that accountability. That's what you do a, a, an amazing job with brother. So I just want to take a moment just to acknowledge you for that. Mm. Oh, thank you. It's uh yeah, we, you know, we, we, another very special thing is, you know, we, we, we do a, a, a walk in high heels for a, a local women's shelter and our juniors and seniors, like we got 125 kids, you know, 50, 60 parents that come to that every year. Uh, it's a very powerful day. You have women making unbelievable, uh, very heartfelt speeches at those things that it's, it's emotional. We have moms that get emotional and share stories that are pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. Um, and, and doing those things is, yes, we're going around and it's, full, you know, walking around the high heels, but it's also, you know, I want this to plant seeds that the other 364 days of the year, you should, you better be standing up for women as well. You know, you better be standing up for women in, in your school and your community and everything else. And this is a lifelong thing and it's mm -hmm. planting those great seeds and an awesome mom, uh, you know, Lorraine uh, brought this up to me years ago and I thought, what a great idea. And, and we'll borrow the high heels and do a, 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 we'll collect items in the school in the past and our boys are wearing the high heels at lunch and it's fun and it's cute, but what a great lesson. And uh, again, it's humility. It's understanding the big picture and doing stuff other than just playing the game. You know, so it's a, it's a beautiful time and just knowing they're paying in, they're buying in to do it. We turn $2,000 over to a shelter. We have parents donating, you know, doing their makeup and, and donating clothes for job interviews. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's humbling to see, you know, I ask them to do stuff. You ask a request, you're going to be there and, and, you know, I'm happy to be there, my wife and everything else. And uh, to see them buy in and just to see them sincerely take ownership of it is, uh, is, is what makes our community what it, what it is really. It's uh, we are relationship first. We really are. And I wasn't like that coaching in my twenties. Um, you know, you're chasing wins and X's and O's, but mm -hmm. once you make relationships a priority, we used to, there used to be a corpus curse. We can never win. We lost to Will Finch and all these stud QBs and everything else. We couldn't win. And it was, uh, it was a, a comment that people made even in our own building. Um, but when you make relationships the priority, uh, that's the difference between me as a 50-year-old coach and mm -hmm. a 25-year-old coach. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just, you're awakened to that, that relationship. You become, you become that real family. You become that, you know, that, uh, that special group that it's just so tight. It's, it's kind of unbreakable. It's, it's, it's special. And we are relationships first. It really is. And any young coach, make those a priority and uh, be amazing what these, what these kids will do and how hard they'll work. Like our studs don't miss practice. They don't, they, 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 there's no place they'd rather be. They don't, they don't miss, you know, and, and it's not, not the military every day either. I can't be coach hard ass all the time. You got to have some fun, right? You can't be drive, drive, drive. Like they did for us in the, in the 80s. Yeah. And it was like, you know, there's there, we gave them blind faith. Now they gotta, they, you have to build that bridge to them. The first month, I need some blind faith for you to trust us yeah. by the end of it, where they kind of see it and it's give and take. We're a very different team in November than we are in September. We are, when we start coming together and, you know, and peaking for playoffs when you want to, we are so tight knit as a group. We've had 10, 12 pasta nights. We've had accountability up and down. Like, you know, we're, 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 we're sharing those experiences. We're emotional in the chapel. We're sharing very personal stories. They're sharing with us, helping mm -hmm. them through stuff. Um, we're a very different team at the end of the year because of all of that, uh, you know, that comes together. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, that's the sadness of by the end of it, it's not let's win this game to go win a championship. How about we win this game so that we can ride for another week and be together. Yeah. Let's not let them take this away from us. It's not about hoisting a trophy. Don't let them end what we have going. Let's keep this machine rolling. Let's, I want to be able to practice with you Monday. That's what I want. That's our goal going into playoff games. We want to practice Monday. That's why, you know, the, the last knee is something that I talk about. When you play your last game and you take a knee in the end zone and talk to your team, 
Coaches need to understand that is the last time you will have your whole team there. You can have a banquet, a party. It can end with an office bowl or anything else. There will always be one kid missing. 25 years of coaching, th this has been true. You will never have 100% of your team there. There'll be a kid away. There'll be a kid sick. That last knee, that talk, how they leave you is very important. And that's where you remind them, they you know, you love them. And, and whatever you need, the answer is yes. Whatever I can do for you, that's, that's important. The mm -hmm. last knee, the last time you all have your group together is one. So choose your words carefully, you know, and, and, and methodically and, and be sincere, you know, and, and tell them you love them. It's, uh, it's there, but there's a sadness about that just because not win or lose, because you're not going to get to do this next week and it's over, you know, 14, 15 weeks. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And that's, don't let someone take that from us. Let's, let's, let's control it ourselves. Right. And that's, that's our goal at the end of the year. Let's just keep, let's keep this thing together before we all walk past the field and go to our cars and it's just you're a little lost you know <laughs> yeah yeah oh i i love that and you took me on this beautiful journey of like the ebbs and flows of uh you know a football season and anyone that's been around the game knows again it's just it's such a beautiful thing yeah I, i'm curious you know you talked about you know in the past there was this sort of limiting belief about this Corpus Christi curse I'm yeah. curious like what was that do you remember <laughs> like when that moment where you started to understand like okay no relationships are really how we take this thing to the next level is how we how we just create a better lasting memories better experience for all and ultimately you know <laughs> The byproduct is you win more football games too. Like I'm curious, was it? What, do you remember that moment where that sort of shifted? I remember being sick and tired of hearing about a corpus curse. I'll tell you yeah. that. Yeah. I remember having to remind people that if you actually believe that to be true, yeah. that's you're weak minded. If you believe that the past is going to predicate what we're going to do this season then you're, you, you, why, why bother? Why play? If you believe that, don't come out. Um, I want people that are going to fight and they're going <clears> to, <throat> if we're undefeated, well, then we're going to go show off our skills and try to win. If we're 0-6, we're going to try to knock your team off. Like there's no, there's no, you're not thinking of failure, right? So mm -hmm. that that's what bothered me that if you think you're going to be painted in a certain way by someone else, then you're not, you're not our kind of guy. I, I, I don't, I don't want you to come out for the team. And then sit on the side and make those comments. But it was really about understanding that that is that is anyone that believes that is a little weak minded. It's mm -hmm. cute and funny by other people. But for us, we're just going to go do our thing. We're not going to chase banners and championships. We're going to go do our thing. You make it a, you know, you kind of circle the wagons and keep it tight. And uh, we're just going to go play. And that first year that we did win, um, we're playing, uh, the younger work brother, the older ones in the NFL, younger ones in the, uh, transfer portal going to Indiana. Now he's a stud and they were undefeated and we were the 500 team and we knocked them off. And the really, the reason we did was just hard work and committing. And we had a great group of humble kids that didn't have any ego, humble and hardworking, the culture of your leaders, your core guys. That's something Frank Estesi taught me in 1994 in high school, um, your core guys like that, that that group drives the rest and and if you have good hardworking guys there that trickle down you can have a pretty dangerous team but they have to be an extension of the coaches we had that in that year we want a chance we want a semifinal on thursday we had a friday film and we're trying to figure out how the heck are we going to stop this rourke high flying 40 points a game offense and we sat in a room and tried to hammer it out till seven o'clock on a friday at the school and the championship is Tuesday at 11 a.m. at McMaster. We tell the boys we had a we had bubble time on the weekend on a Sunday. We basically revamped our whole offense. We're going to go 30 front cover two, whatever, to take away this kid's unbelievable offense and arm. And we got to keep him off the field. The best defense is Will Finch and these guys keep them off the field. We need to grind out the clock, fake some punts and keep them off. We practice Sunday morning in a bubble, Monday morning in a bubble. 6 a.m. and be at school for 8.15. Monday after school, Tuesday morning, we fit in five practices before a Tuesday game at 11 a.m. and we upset them uh, 13 to nine. And uh, it's just that kids didn't miss. The parents brought them on a weekend, on a Monday morning and to, in a bubble that's like 10 minutes away from campus. 
it was just everybody dialing in and that commitment to we had every reason to lose that game and like okay well they're seven and oh but no we're gonna go we're gonna try to go take it we're gonna go try to knock these guys off and uh it's just that element of they believed in us we believed in them 30 front mm-hmm. whatever let's just go play football let's just line up different and let's just go play and that's the beauty of just understanding these kids will just they'll buy in and they want to be successful and this is the plan you buy the plan uh they're buying what we're what we're selling based on that trust and they just and our thing was practice winning every day because we really believe those five practices is what got that game and kept kept that you know uh that won that first one and now that corpus curse is laughable we could laugh at that and then we win a few in a row and then we win a few in a row and it's uh it's just that culture it's 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 not just a game right you're planting seeds in these young men that uh and uh, i remember a coach saying you know i remember asking what do you think they're going to do and he's like well they embarrassed us the first time why would they change okay well then let's 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 roll with that and uh yeah it was pretty it's pretty amazing those kids are uh that was a very special group and the first group is very special. And then the, the jackets are on campus and, and the younger guys see those and you're wearing your trophy every day in the winter to school. That plants great seeds, right? You're, you're, mm. That stuff builds culture and, and drives it in the community and stuff. So, you know, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And that helps, helps them get recruited. It helps them get into that program at that school. It helps them, you know, uh, their confidence and their training and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's beautiful. And I love they come back to visit. And I love that when they look at a university, they're looking for Corpus 2.0. They really want a family. They want to be coached. They want to learn from, they want to learn the best um, and they want to be successful. And that's, that's an unbelievable compliment when I know that that's what they're looking for. And, and uh, explaining that to coaches, they, they kind of get it. And that's, that's special. That's special. Yeah. I love, you know, you talk about this idea of like planting great seeds, water them, nurture them, you know, giving them sun. And it's interesting that, you know, one of the things I often like to do, you know, when I'm blessed to have the opportunity to go speak is this idea of asking people a question, like, when does a carrot seed actually become a carrot? Hmm. And it's interesting because when I ask that, you can see sort of, I mean, you're an educator, you know that, huh? I don't really get what he's saying. Some get it, but then it's like that idea. It's, hey, carrot seed's always been a carrot. It's just a matter of time right? Like you said, watering it, nurturing it, right? Uh, giving it sunlight. And that gives, you know, sort of an algae of, you know, belief and faith and, and it will come to be. It's not a question of if it will come to be. It's, it's just a matter of when it will come to be. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah the game reveals so much. I, I just believe in the game is very important to me and informing me and <laughs> great men coaching me, uh, you know, at different times and, and learning, you know, uh, at Cardinal Newman back in the day, you know, Phil Roberto and Mario Sermonera, they, they coach from the tower. You know, when, when you see the, the Bear Bryant 40 feet, you know, 40, 80 feet high in that tower. And it was, it was different. It was a different time. It was, mm-hmm. it was coached more like the military or whatever. They didn't care what we were doing or how my marks, you know, how, how I was doing, how, what kind of a day I had. Uh, and I didn't seek them out during the day, but it was great. They were, they taught me how to be a football player. They taught me how to be tough. And that kind of stuff. And that's important. And Frank Gustazi was, he gave us a, you know, you went from being a butcher to being a surgeon, the technical, the foot, the hand placement, the feet, the, the, the all year round kind of stuff. And, you know, you learn, you learn from him and I'm learning stuff that, you, you know, it's, I'm learning in a university and then Blake Dill, Blake Mills, just the, you know, having him as a, as a linebacker coach at, at university at St. FX was, he was just full service. He was all day all around. How you feeling? what's going on if he heard someone was was smoking he would you know he, he's he's grabbing you and bringing it in his office and you know that was uh when he went to calgary and eight kids followed him from saint mary's i know why i know why because if you have an injury you're getting the very best he's finding the best in town to take mm-hmm. care of you full service 365 days a year and that's uh learn from the past right and 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 mm-hmm. he can't coach from the tower anymore kids see everything they know which teacher authentically cares about them, which coach does. They know who to go to when they need something and they need support and they're a little down and out. Um, they're always watching. They're always watching and they know who's authentic and who is not. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
you know, my door is always open. And I laugh, like I, I have a bunch of 28 year olds come back and coach, you know, cause we can't hire like we used to. And we have to rely on those former players. And I joke, those guys never got what you got. I didn't know any of their parents. I didn't know what they did or what, and, and I didn't care to. And I tell them I kind of failed them and they still came back, you know? So I was just different and I didn't foster them and nurture those relationships. Yeah. And we never really won championships. So there's a, you know, like, and it's just, and they come back and they laugh about it, but it's true. Um, I was a very different coach back then. And again, you're chasing wins, you're chasing other stuff, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the kid, our kids are very fortunate. They're very fortunate of, of our young coaches to come back in their twenties and give back and uh, what an absolute blessing. And it's so great to see them every day and come down and Miles Manel is a coach with us. He gets picked up by the Alouettes. He leaves wins a great cup. They're playing in Hamilton for the great cup. He's leaving practice and coming to our practices because he's in town again. Like just who cares about your program more than former players? Yeah. Who, you know, it meant so much to them. And uh, I kind of failed them, you know, like looking at, they didn't get the value that these kids are getting now. And, you know, God bless them. They still come back and, and give to us. And I, we wouldn't be, they bring back just such great learning. Our kids are so lucky what they learned at Western and Queens and Guelph and they're learning D line techniques that I couldn't give them, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're learning it from young guys that the best of the best. And when I hear a kid go to, go to, go to a school, I'm like, well, are, are you comfortable with the offense? Yeah, we're already doing that. We just call it something different. And that's where that's, that's, I'm very proud of that, that our kids are, they're ready they're ready you know and that's that's a, that's a beautiful thing our coaches our our old coordinator should be coaching in the OUA you know our kids are very fortunate to have a guy like coach Coker run the O that he does and teach and put in all that time as an outside guy it's uh yeah I'm very blessed to have him and our kids are very blessed to have him I'll tell you that mm. you know brother again I, I'm blessed to have this conversation because again <laughs> it's interesting you just start to understand it you know, like we talked about at the start, like success always leaves clues and you start to understand why, you know, um, the Corpus Christi family is is where it is today, right? Because a lot of these lessons. Um, I'm curious, right? I've, I've noticed that there's a lot of coaches similar to where we are, right? That, you know, have been coaching, you know, 20 years plus, right? And we've had great mentors that poured into us that helped us to see about how to do things in a certain way. Seems like there's a lot of young coaches that are 10 years or less in. And it seems like in that middle, there's not as many, right? It's just a different day and age. Yep. Curious, you know, for, for those young coaches, and, and again, I know you have you have many of them around the program, you know, if if they could pick your brain for you know, a couple minutes and they said, coach, you know, I, I want to coach. I want to lead. I truly want to serve the hearts of young people. I want to guide and mentor, you know, what words of wisdom would you offer them? I'd say that it, it gets back to your point of it takes a village. I think that that support from others is very important. Um, if you can, if you can dial in, you know, not only your players, but their families and parents, that's a big part. Our parent community is uh, is strong and so supportive. And, you know, for them to say, you know, hey, coach, let me know if a kid can't afford a jacket. Let me know if a kid can't, you know, can't, can't pay for a meal or something like that, or they're off a fee or something or a team fee. Uh, for them to step up and, and do things like that for kids is, is beautiful. Um, so I'd say it's not just about building that bridge to kids. I think it's, it's, to their families and where you're all kind of driving it together, uh, having those parent meetings and talking about that, you know, they are giving you their son. It's a very physical, their child, it's a very physical sport. There's some angst there. Um, but I, I also am prideful that we we try to try to teach things the right way. We try to take the head out of football as much as we can. We try to do a ton with safety tackling and the toys and limit the contact and, and that stuff. But getting back to your question is something that is this, is this about being right or is it about getting it right? I think that's important to understand and about serving and uh, you know, we're serving kids and, and how do we do that the best? And sometimes people need to be reminded and they need to also get out of their comfort zone on how they did it their way or how they, they might've done it before advocate and fight for your kids. Can't always go in fighting, but advocate and fight for your kids. And uh, you know, that's, that's 
also very important and having a, you know, a good game day experience, making building that stuff up is very important to, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful game. How do we make it better? But you can't do it all. You can't pick 10 things to do in one season either. I think you got to focus on a couple of things. Uh, you know, you got to focus on a few things at a time and, and kind of build that over time. Um, and, and just, it kind of just comes with experience, I guess. And knowing where to focus your time, I guess, is, is also a tough thing, right? But it's uh, that support of others is crucial. That bogged down in paperwork, well, you can't do it all poorly. You can't juggle seven things at once and do them bad. So I think it's just having that support team. Can someone help you with your paperwork? If you're the X's and O person, can someone help you with, you know, some things and take them off your plate? And that's something I wasn't good at when I was younger either. I did it all myself and you're, you know, you're a little frustrated and whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, you're wearing all those hats, but you can ask for a little support, take people up on their genuine offer of support. Uh, that's something I've gotten better at as well. And, uh, you know, it, it does take that village, like you said, and um, focusing on one or two things at a time, taking times like this in the winter to get better. If you're not comfortable with defense, get into defense. If you're not comfortable with protection and linemen, get into that. You know, and that's something that I try to do in the winter and try to, you know, uh, there was a coach that said, uh, you know, uh, he was asked, you know, what are you looking for when you're hiring uh, a new coach? And he said, I don't want a guy repeating a coach that's coached for 10 years. I don't want someone that's repeating year one, 10 years in a row. I want someone that has done a bunch of stuff and, and is comfortable with OOD and specials. And um, that's a 10 year vet, not someone who just is a one trick pony. Right. So I think that, uh, you know, surrounding yourself with good people is crucial. And, you know, I've coached up, I've played up, I've wifed up, I've Everything I do, my friends, they're, they're you know, you, you hit your cart to great people that are better than me. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of the trick. That's where, you know, if you can get great people and, and uh, surround yourself with great people, you know, you're, I'm, I'm here on the backs of other people. I'm here on the backs of great kids and great coaches that, you know, this program's not about me. It's, uh, it's all of us. And, you know, I, I kind of joke with my kids sometimes, you know, I've coached 25 years. You know how many games I've won? None. Not one touchdown, not one tackle, nothing. The wings are yours. The wins are for kids, yeah. not for me. You know, I've won no games. You can't play it if I show up. Just I show up, right? So it's theirs. It's theirs. It's I want the light on them. That's where it needs to be. You know, and it's uh, they do a lot for me, right? They're 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 unbelievable. I expect a lot of them, but I give them a lot. You know, and it's that that reciprocal. You know, is uh, that relationship is is key, but one or two things a year, try to get a little better at one or two things a year. I think that's the way you practice, the way you buying a toy or two to, that'll help you um, get in your phone and try to get some great coaches out, you know, getting, that'll help your program, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah, your parents are a, a great driving force that I think that's something to tap into that I didn't also do when I was in, you know, years ago. Yeah. You want to do it all yourself and you, it's not smart. <laughs> Great reminder on, on the importance of, as coaches and leaders, being open, right? And being coachable ourselves. And that's how we will. Hey, everybody. It's all good. That's what editing's for. <laughs> <laughs> all good, man. It's all good. Could be um, you, could be me. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Um, no, it was interesting and, and hearing you share, you know, I love the idea of like, you know, focus on one or two areas that you want to become better in. And, and I think those, those are sage words. Those are wise words of wisdom that really will help you be better in any area of your life. Yeah. We were at a, we were at a clinic for uh, an Ohio state clinic back when we used to be able to go to those awesome clinics in the States and being able to see practice and, you know, being able to whatever it, Vrabel was on uh, <clears throat> uh, Urban Meyer's new staff at the time. He just got hired after his sabbatical first year at Ohio State in uh, maybe 2013 or something like that. And uh, two things: Vrabel goes uh, says, you know, I'm I'm watching a high school game and I see, you know, this this kid gets knocked down and he gets up, and I see he gets knocked down again the next play and he gets up, and and the next play he gets knocked down and this kid just keeps getting up. And what's the lesson there? And, and a coach says, you know, well, that kid keeps getting up. I want to go talk to him. 
Goes, no, I want to talk to the guy that keeps hitting, knocking him down. You know, like you know, at that level, they're looking for they're looking for the big dogs. Yeah. But uh, but Urban Meyer said something that was, how do I con? You know, you have your your core guys, as my old coach Gustazi said, your core group. He said, if if how do you get that group to constantly pull up that middle group? How do you get a bunch of A's to get maybe the B's and C's up? How do you get the big brothers to get the little brothers up? And he just had, he talked about Tim Tebow. He talked about John Simon, who, who played about 10 years in the NFL with uh, the, the Patriots and stuff. And uh, he said, you know, when John Simon would ask him, coach, I need a fob. I need a, a pass card. I'd like to get in the weight room at 6 a.m. He said, okay, that sounds good. But when I check the cameras and you don't have six teammates with you, I take your card away. So you can come, but you need to bring six other guys with you because he knew that if John Simon's asking them, they're coming. So how do you constantly, and, and that accountability stuff is part of it, but how do you get the, the, those guys that are exhibiting that behavior most of the time to bring those up? And Tim Tebow was obviously a big factor at, uh, at Florida with that. Mm -hmm. And it's that acknowledgement. It's the, you know, he, he just talked about how a guy coming up for a $4 t-shirt, you know, Tim Tebow doing that felt like he was 10 feet tall, that, that public, you know, credit in front of his peers, the, that, that stuff, uh, a six pack of drinks for an NFL guy going up for a $10, you know, thing of Bud Light, he said was, was, was special that, you know, a guy making millions of dollars, that, that validation in front of your peers, the way we do the decals, even just taking a knee at practice and talking about, Hey, Mrs. So-and-so said you were awesome in class today and you were a helper and you helped her with her bags going up the stairs today. Um, that stuff, it means stuff. It means something, you know, that, 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 you know, to build someone up and, and, you know, well, that they don't even realize the little things matter. Hey, he held the door open for me today. The little things that, that, that you hear and uh, that validation is uh, how do you bring that group up? How do you do that on your staff, on a sales team, on a, you know, on, on a teaching staff? How do you do that? It's, uh, it, it's amazing. We're always kind of looking for ways to kind of do that because the people that aren't happy, they're always recruiting too. Right. So if you have that middle group, that was Urban Meyer's message, you know, you want them rounded up to that group, not rounded down to the people that are, well, why the hell am I here? Like, why am I They're They're recruiting, you know, they want, they want people to be like them too. So that's where uh, you're always trying to kind of get that group to rise up rather than losing them down. And that's, that's another thing that comes with experience is kind of knowing what your team needs. Can't, you can't drive them into the ground that great competition every day competing and having fun with it is uh, it's very important, you know, and it comes with time. Can't be coach hard bass all the time. You just can't, <laughs> it's not the military, you know, knowing when you need to chill out and take a break. It's uh, it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Brother. And I love the reminder on, you know, one of the greatest needs of every human being is to feel seen, to feel heard, to feel appreciated. And when you can consistently do that with other people, it, it's amazing. They will run through the proverbial wall for you and they will. Yeah. So, so brother, I, I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you for the great man you are, you know, the great husband, the great teacher, the great coach, the great mentor, but more importantly, the amazing human being you are, you know, the, the one thing that I've always appreciated about you, whether it's, you know, our conversations, you know, over social, or just when I had the opportunity to actually meet you in person, or even when I see the young men, we've both been blessed to sort of be part of their lives. Like you, you just resonate like love, unconditional love. And I just want to thank you for reminding me of the power of like loving on people and truly wanting to serve the hearts and minds of others. So just want to thank you for being, uh, shot example what it means to truly love someone unconditionally brother oh thanks so much and and yeah your your message is awesome love following your stuff keep out the awesome content too keep it coming canadian content canadian football content is hard to find and uh every coach should be dialed into this stuff there's uh yeah a lot of great stuff so thank you keep doing it thank you yeah absolutely brother uh oh coach Borketa dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. But as I like to remind you every week in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's a consistent and focused application of great knowledge that actually creates 
greater results. So my challenge to you is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom and go apply it to your life today. And as I like to remind you every week in the huddle, you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. And my only ask from these conversations, if, if it resonated with you, if it touched your heart, then please share it with a friend, a loved one, a teammate, or just someone you think that would benefit from listening to these positive, inspiring, and empowering ideas. The more people we have listening, understanding, and applying these simple principles to their life, the more blessed this world will be. As always, love having these conversations with you in the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day.